All right, so the purpose of this video is to take a deep dive into the speedometer gauge within the reference cluster. And if we look at the component and scrub through the, the animation here, we see a lot of elements within this gauge. We have a, like this blue sweeping gradient that follows the outer needle object. We've got some reflective glows on the glass lens here and on the inner bevel. And we've got this round bezel on the outside here, as, as well as a graphic ring that expands as the uh, speed increases, this guy right here. So a lot of things going on, and so the purpose is to break this down in the 3D modeling program and also show the texture maps that are used to build this object and how I animate the texture maps along the UV space uh, and so on. So let's go ahead and take a look at Modo. So this gauge in Modo, is, it's all gray shaded right now. There's no texture maps visible on it. So you can see every, every polygon on every component within that speedometer that we saw in Studio. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide everything and then just kind of show everything one by one and show how I texture mapped or laid out the UVs over over the texture maps that I'm using to build up this cluster. So starting with the needle, very simple. And in fact, I'll unhide the round bezel object. So this is kind of the metallic object you see in studio that's black. Uh, so this is the needle. So it really is just a flat rectangle and its pivot is uh, centered at the origin. So if I were to rotate it right now, we can see it traveling around the uh, the round bezel there. So pretty straightforward. And next we have our numerals. So this geometric ring here in the, is uh, laid out in the UV space to uh, account for all of our numbers that make up the speedometer. So if I go back to studio, all of these numbers here sit on that piece of geometry. And then next we have our center scroll speed indicator. And that is this piece here, the 120 currently indicated. So if I scroll through the animation, you see that animation taking place on this piece of geometry here. And next we have the inner gradient highlighted in orange. If I just hover over it for a minute. So this uh, piece of geometry is responsible for that sweeping blue gradient that we have following our, our needle. And what you'll al also notice are these white tick marks also following that gradient. And that is the inner gradient ticks geometry, which is really kind of a copy of the inner gradient geometry, except that it, it has uh, a little bit more uh, going on with it in, um, in a 3D space. So I had to copy it and do uh, some minor adjustments to make it work as a tick mark graphic rather than just a gradient, which I'll explain later. And we've also got our graphic ring. So this object here in studio, let me just go ahead and move this aside so we can see it, is this sort of blue inner, inner line, kind of got two concentric rings that fit along inside of this, uh, this gauge here. So I'm going to bump up its emissive value and, and brightness just to uh, show what it is here. So yeah, it's this guy. So as the speed increases, that ring kind of just expands from the center. And we've also got the reflection, uh, the uh, inner reflection on that sits on the lens and the, the reflection that uh, kind of glows and follows the needle along the inner bevel of our round bezel object. So let me just go ahead and pull that forward just a little bit so we can see that. And then we've got that lens object, which is just a static object, and our center gradient right here. And the center gradient is essentially this blue these blue parallel lines that kind of fade out from the center out to the uh, outside edges here. Just kind of a nice graphical effect. 
All right, so now let's take a look at each 3D object and their UV space setup for texture mapping. So going back to Moto, we've got all of our 3D geometry here, and I'm just going to go one by one through each of them and talk about how they're laid out in UV space for optimal texture mapping. So the round bezel selected in my items list. If we look down to the UV maps list, we've got a UV setup for it. So if I have it selected and then go to the UV editor, um, we see how it's laid out over the texture map that it's uh, that it's been assigned to assigned to it. So we've got the outer bevel here. If I select the polygons that make that up, we see that this uh, this selection has been mapped as, as the outermost um, part of the the UV map, just to get the most of this map as possible, um, since we're we're going to see that part of the geometry the most in our presentation. This is the, the rear part of the bezel, which we uh, rarely see, but, ha but however, the round bezel object in our presentation is slightly transparent. So without this back piece of geometry, um, it looks a little strange, so I decided to keep it. And this is our inner wall and our, and our outer wall, cylindrically unwrapped uh, in the UV editor. So that's the UV layout for the bezel object. And if I deselect the UV map, and let's go ahead and move on to the center gradient. All right, the center gradient which is this uh, this pair of uh, parallel lines here that fade out from the center is using the same texture map as a couple of other objects in our scene. So I'm going to unhide those other elements as well so we can see everything together. So the, the needle is using that texture map. The uh, inner gradient is not. Neither is the inner gradient ticks. The graphic ring is and the lens. And I believe that's it. So if we go back to studio, uh, we've got that inner gradient, this lens object, and this graphical ring as well as the needle, all using one texture map. So if we look at the UV space, if I select all of these objects here, You see their UVs laid out all together over one texture map. So in Photoshop, it looks like this. First of all, it, it actually looks more like, like this if I uh, duplicate this layer and then set it to screen. This is my UV export from Moto. So we see this is the lens object here. And this is my graphical ring geometry laid out in UV space. And the top left and the lower right objects here are the uh, center gradient that fade out from the center out. And then this bottom left rectangle is the needle that moves around the, the gauge in the speedometer. And this is the texture map sort of blended over top of my wireframe, my UV wireframe. And you can see how the lens fits perfectly over that center uh, UV space, and then we've got this graphical ring, concentric rings fitted to that uh, geometric ring there, and our center gradients on the top left and the lower right. And if I had any kind of need for fuel or engine temp icons, I can map some geometry over those as well. So this is kind of like a decal sheet, so if I were to remove the UVs from my uh, Photoshop file, just hide the layers, you can see the UVs are now gone and the uh, texture map is displaying over black. Um, but in reality, in studio, it looks like this. Um, it's all really just a bunch of uh, decals and gradients over, over transparent space. So uh, this is actually what the texture map looks like. And as we could see here, we've got several objects using that one texture map.
Okay, moving on to our reflection object. So this is the geometry that represents the uh, reflective blue kind of glow on the uh, lens, on the center lens, and on the inner bevel of, uh, of that round bezel object. So in the UV editor, uh, first I need to change out the map. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the reflection geometry uh, is also unwrapped, and so in our UV space we see how it overlaps our uh, reflectant, or reflection texture map. And if I hide the geometry, we can see that it's just a simple gradient up in the upper left quadrant of this uh, UV space. And it's set up this way so I can rotate the texture map and easily just animate this uh, reflective texture uh, over time without having to worry about offsets too much. So in Photoshop, if I open the texture map and then just put a black layer behind it so we can see it just a little better. This is what it looks like and if I were to just do a kind of a fake rotation, just a mock demonstration of how it animates over the UV space, it would essentially be like this in studio. So it's pretty pretty easy to see how that, that's set up. Um, graphic ring, we already took a look at that. Inner gradients, the uh, inner gradient and the inner gradient ticks uh, essentially share the same uh, UV space. If I open each one of them up, they're really the same object, ex object except one of them is scaled down slightly so that it doesn't clip the other objects. So the inner gradient ticks is going to render over top of the, the blue gradient behind it. So if I zoom in here, we can see the black wireframe of the inner gradient surface. So they need to be close together but not touching. And so I just went ahead and did that in, in Modo. Um, you can also set that up that way in Studio, essentially the same way. Uh, so it's laid out cylindrically, uh, and it was cylindrically unwrapped in Moto's uh, UV editor so that I can basically blend a white gradient from left to right. And I'll go ahead and show you that. All right, so this is the texture map, this white gradient here. And if I un unhide the geometry, we can see that um, it's laid out in such a way that all I need to do is animate the, uh, U, the U direction in studio to get the uh, desired animation effect that I want on this geometry. Speed scroller, let me replace the map for that. Okay, so we see here that it's unwrapped in such a way that um, it, it fits the sort of that long strip of, of numbers. And in Photoshop, it's, I think, a 64 by 512 texture map, so 64 wide by 512 tall. And it looks like I actually need to center up the geometry in this UV space here. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it in the U direction. So now it fits all of the numbers entirely. 